are coming at you with another episode of the All In Podcast, a podcast for casual leaguers. I am joined by my co-host, Style on him, one, two, three, and maybe not now, but a little later, uh, Light may be dropping in, uh, but today's segment is uh, going to be called Fact Check 9.7, and really the whole point of this is to take a look at the perceived buffs and nerfs of uh, what Riot has done in 9.7 and see if it's actually done anything on the Rift, if it's affected these champions. Uh, we'll look at some of the big changes that were made, uh, really just to see if um, anything has actually been done about some of the stronger champions and some of the weaker champions and, and delve right into that. Um, I am going to be going through probably just the bigger changes uh, and we'll be discussing those and um, if need be, uh, we can revisit some things and talk about them in more uh, detail if we have to. So uh, anything you want to open up with, Style? How's your how's your uh, game's been going since 9.7 dropped? That was last week. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, I've played that much since 9.7. I haven't played that many games on 9.7. Okay. And the games that you did play, were you playing ranked or just more casual? Ranked. I was playing ranked. But oh, okay. There is no such thing as casual for you, is there? <laughs> no. Nah, I don't play normals by myself. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I think mostly if I'm playing, unless I'm learning a new champion, I'm always playing ranked because it just feels wasted if not. But um, anyway, so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, and I have my patch notes up from 9.7. I also have uh, the notes that I took. I actually did some research, guys. I haven't done hardcore research since college. And that was, oh man, I want to say like 15 years ago. So it's been a while since I've done some researching, but this was interesting stuff to find. So uh, I will preface this by saying most of the stats that I got were from u.gg. There's a bunch of stat sites out there, um, but that is where where I got them from. So uh, if anybody wants to uh, double check my stuff, then that's where I'm, I'm going from. So I think let's just dive right in and let's get into probably the biggest uh, OP champion, I think, for the past couple of patches, and that's Kale. Um, I think since the rework, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, talk about this champion being OP. In fact, uh, I believe they were saying that with her high win percentage, even if you were to look up her worst matchups, quote unquote, uh, even her worst matchups, uh, Kale was still getting above a 50% win rate, which is just insane uh, to to hear you know, to hear those things that her counter matchups, she was still having above a 50% win rate. So here's what they did in 9.7. They continued to nerf her. And they said armor growth, health regen decreased, Q cross increase, uh, Q cost increased, W movement speed decreased, cost increased, uh, E damage reduced, but now has a ratio. So they wanted to adjust her stats uh, even more, try to hurt her early game a little bit more because that's supposed to be the weak part. The problem was that her her laning phase wasn't that weak and she could survive and basically just scale with with levels and and be strong so her base stats her health regen went from six down to five armor growth went from 3.5 to three uh, her q went from 60 to 80 mana um, and it's gone from 70 to 90 mana, so an increase in mana there on the Radiant Blast. W, Celestial Blessing. The modus movement speed was 26 to 50%, uh, and now it's gone down from uh, to 24%, scaling to 40%. So at max levels, it's down 10%. It's quite pretty big. Um, the cost on the mana was 70 to 90. It's uh, gone down uh, starting at 60, but it scales all the way up to 100. So lower mana cost early on, higher mana cost later in the game. And then finally, E, Starfire Spellblade. Uh, bonus magic damage went from 10 to 20% of the target's missing health, uh, now to 8 uh, going up to 16% plus 1% per 100 ability power of the target's missing health. All right, so uh, those were the nerfs. And so what we wanted to do was actually uh, see how that affected her on the Rift. Uh, and I know you didn't say you played uh, a lot of games, but have you experienced anything or seen anything uh, regarding Kale style uh, since since the patch dropped? Uh, I haven't seen Kale but ever since 9.7. Hit, but mm -hmm. at 9.6, she was still strong. Okay. Have you got a chance to play her at all, or not really? Nah, I'm too scared to take her bot lane still. 
<laughs> that's true and uh by the way by i i did take i did look up stats for both just the top lane and mid lane um i did not look up you know bot lane or jungle because that i really still feel like you should not be playing them there so anyways uh so the truth is uh i looked at uh kale and i looked at her top uh, top win rate. So 9.6, she was at a 55.31 win percentage. Uh, since then, since patch 9.7 dropped, she's dropped down slightly to 53.49%. Now that's in plat rank and above. So she did go down a little bit, still above 50%. Uh, now in gold, she was at 56%, uh, which is super high. She's dropped down to 54%. So still decently high silver is the same story from 56 to 54 percent bronze 55 to 53 percent same thing in iron um, so she has dropped a couple percentage points in win percentage but it's still above 50 percent um, I think the biggest difference lies in uh, her potential counter matchup. So in 9.7, her, her counters were, or excuse me, in 9.6, her counters were Jax, Nasus, Trindamir, and Riven. Um, and Jax being supposedly her worst matchup um, was still, Kale still had a 50.7% win rate. Um, against Jax, that has dropped to 49.6. So not much. It's barely brought, um, you know, Jax kind of in favor there of that matchup. Uh, with Nasus, though, it went from 53.9%, so almost 54% down to 50%. So that's a noticeable change there. Uh, with Trindamir, it went from 52% down to 50%, and with Ribbon, from 51 to 50%. So uh, all of that said, uh, with the Kale nerfs, what does that mean? It still seems like she's pretty strong, um, even though her counter matchups may have a better chance shutting her down. Um, what we're still seeing is that even with her worst matchup, she's still right around a 50% win rate. Um, and even in all ranks uh, from, from you know, plat all the way down to iron, uh, she's still seeing above a 53% win rate. So um, that's what we're seeing. Uh, mid lane, I just did quick mid lane stats and her win rate is still at 50%. It was at 52% and 9.6. Now it's down to 50, uh, 50%. Um, so overall, what, what the stats are showing is that yes, the nerfs may have toned her win rate down a little bit. Um, however, maybe it's because people still haven't quite figured out how to uh, win against Kale once she gets to a certain point. Uh, she's still sporting above a 50% win rate, um, and it's still looking pretty good, at least in the top lane and mid lane. So if you're playing Kale, um, keep playing her. It seems like she's still going to be good. Um, do you have any thoughts or any other opinions on Kale at the moment, uh, Josh? Um, no, I think she's still strong. She's going to continue to be strong until, until she gets like a, a considerable nerf. Yeah. And I think um, one thing I have seen Riot, I don't know if I saw where I saw this, but I think they're trying to, um, because I know with you can get Elixir of Skill if you get Klepto, which is normally the rune yeah, that most people take. you can finish it at, what is it? You can finish at, your upgrade at 15, level 15. That's right. And I think they're actually trying to get it so she scales with level as opposed to skill now, um, so that that won't be possible. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to do that, but that's something I've heard them talk about. So it does look like Riot is still, I mean, as long as she is this strong, I think Riot is still going to cont continue to try to tweak her. Um, so if you've been playing Kale, um, you should still be seeing pretty good success. So uh, consensus is keep playing Kale. <laughs> All right, the next one is Urgot, um, or Urgot, as most say. Uh, so Urgot went strong again in 9.6 because of some of the changes they made, uh, particularly with her W with his W toggle with Conqueror. That would seem to be pretty OP. Um, but they did try to tweak him, give him some nerfs in 9.7. So here's what they did. Um, they changed the passive Echoing Flames. Uh, the damage went from 2% scaling to 8% of target's max health. Now, it starts at still at 2%, but it only scales to 6% uh, target's max health, uh, but still at the same levels, 1, 6, 9, 11, and 13. So they just nerfed the percentage damage of the target's max health at, at late game. Uh, e, Disdain, they changed the cooldown from a flat 14 seconds. Uh, now it starts at 16, which is already 2 seconds more, uh, and then it finally scales down to 14 seconds in the later game. 
the cost went from 50 scaling to 90. Uh, now it's 60 scaling to 100. And then our Fear Beyond Death, the ultimate, the damage was reduced from 125 scaling to 375. Now it's at 100 scaling to 350. So um, basically they nerfed the passive damage. They also nerfed uh, Disdain so that the cooldown is a little longer early on. Also, there's more mana. So you kind of have to be more selective of when you want to use uh, the Urgot's E because that also gives him the shield. So you can't just spam it all the time. You got to be real careful when you do it. Um, and then Fear Beyond Death, they nerfed the uh, damage a little bit. Any thoughts on this real quick before I go into the stats uh, style? Um, I noticed that, what is it, when Urgot was in 9.5, he had like a 43% win rate. Mm -hmm. And then it went up to like 52. Mm -hmm. So that's like 9%. And nerfing him again only brought him down by 1%. That's right. Yep. And that's exactly what uh, the stats have been showing. Um, you know, in top lane... And I did both top and jungle because for some reason we were seeing Urgot in the jungle, at least in NA. Uh, I'm not in sure if, if it was like that in the, in the I EU. I saw him once in EU. You saw him once? Like, okay. Once in like 50, 60 games. Okay. Yeah, and I, I did see him quite a bit in NA. So uh, different, you know, different styles, different regions. So I did just for, you know, giggles, look up top and jungle. Uh, so top uh, in plat, he, he did go from 52 to 51. Not much. Gold, 53 to 51%. Silver, 54 to 52. Same in bronze. And then an iron went from 55 to 52 as well. So what we're seeing is that the nerfs really didn't do much. Uh, he's still winning a good amount of games across, you know, all the way from iron to plat plus. Um, so I would say that he's been tamed, but he's still pretty strong. Uh, let's look at the jungle stats. In plat, he was at 59%, uh, went down to 50, 47%, so 49 to 47%. Gold went from 52 to 50%, silver 53 to 51%, bronze 54 to 52%, and iron went from 54 to 50 So jungle still seems go uh, good in gold, elo, and below. Uh, plat and above, it seems like it, it's not, there, there's going to be much better jungler choices out there, especially with some of the, the stronger junglers. So uh, if you're in gold and below and have been playing jungle, finding success, then you should probably still be seeing about the same. But overall, the consensus looks like the nerfs uh, didn't do much. Uh, it tweaked him a little bit. Yes, his win percentages got uh, shaved off by a percentage, but he is still strong. And like Style says, uh, from 9.5 to 9.6, he jumped like 9% in win rate. And uh, since this nerf, quote unquote, in uh, 9.7, he's only gone down about a percentage or so in all ELO. So... Definitely still play him. He's still pretty strong. I think he's still going to be a late game beast. Um, and that the stats are proving to be the same thing. Um, all right. So let's move on to Silas. Uh, so Silas, I think, I don't know if it's how it is in the EU uh, style. But for me, I think in NA, I feel like Silas seems to be the champion that a lot of people do not like. Um, how, how was the perception of Silas over there in EU West? He's a super high band. He's not mm -hmm. He's not even picked that much, but everyone mm -hmm. just bans him. I don't know yeah, why they yeah. ban him. Yeah. Because even when he gets through, he doesn't win uh -huh. that much. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's exactly what I was trying to get at and, and um, see if you were experiencing the same thing. But for me, I personally do ban Silas quite a bit. I don't know why. I think it's because when he was first released, just seeing that amount of heal that he had, it just seemed uh, really broken. But they have nerfed him. And even before the nerfs, uh, he was already not winning that high percentage of uh, games. So for whatever reason, I think the player perception was just that he was OP. Um, and maybe it's because he was banned a lot. Maybe that's why the win percentage is down. I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, the perception was that he was strong, even though he wasn't winning that many uh, percentages of the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, they did nerf him in 9.7. His health regen base stats went from 9.5 to 7.5. Uh, his W Kingslayer, the damage went from 60 to 180. Now it's at 50, uh, scaling to 150. So it's gone down at all levels. Uh, and the empowered damage went from 90 to 270 down to 75 to 225 so that's a pretty big nerf on the w uh damage uh and then finally e uh the cooldown went from 12 seconds to 10 seconds now it's at 18 seconds down to 10 so in early levels it is at 18 seconds that is six seconds longer than what it was uh if anything i think these are huge nerfs uh for a champ that wasn't really seeing that great of a win percentage anyways um 
And so let's just go ahead and take a look at, at what we found uh, as far as uh, the statistics. Uh, so the win rate in 9.6, surprisingly, was at just above 50%, uh, at 51.07%. Uh, but now it is dropped in 9.7 to 45.2%. That's huge. Now, that's in Platinum Plus ranking. Uh, that's a big drop from 51 to 45. That's six percentage points dropped. In Gold, it's similar. From 49, like I said, he wasn't winning that much uh, you know, in lower ELO. So 49, but now is down to 44%. Silver was at 48 down to 44 percent bronze same story iron was 46 to 44 percent um so those are huge uh huge uh, drops in win percentage especially in uh actually in all the elos really in in higher elos silas was winning um above 50 percent uh, but that has been brought down. But in lower elos, he's he's definitely just gotten even worse. In fact, some of the counters for Silas were uh, Morgana, Lux, and Vigar. Um, and so Morgana was, you know, uh, Silas only had a 43% win rate and 9.6 against Morgana. Now that's down to 38%. Uh, with Lux, it was a 44, 44% win rate down to 40%. And Vigar from 45 to 40%. Um, in fact, because of the nurses introduced new counters, um, which were Zillion, Nico, Talon, and Annie, uh, and he has terrible win rates against those champions with Zillion. It's only 38%. Nico, it's only 39%. Talon, it's 39%. And Annie, it's 40%. So, um, I'd say he's been pretty nerfed, pretty, pretty hard nerfed. He might not even need to be banned. He probably shouldn't have even been banned anyways. So, uh, would, do you have any other thoughts on that style? No, I haven't seen him much. Uh, okay. He's either been like banned or just not picked. Yeah, um, and and that's the thing. So if you've perceived Silas to be strong for whatever reason, um, don't believe the hype. Don't waste your ban on him. He is pretty bad right now, and the stats are proving it. Um, he's just not in a good spot. So uh, if you were thinking about picking up Silas, maybe you want to hold off until they give him some love. But right now, he is not doing that well. All right, let's move on to Morgana. Any thoughts on Morgana before we head into um, what we're going to talk about? Any thoughts on Morgana style? Um, I think she's she got nerfed, but it was I don't think it hit support much. It just hit um, mid Morgana. Mid. Yep. Um, so they did try to nerf, and I, I trust me. I played in the mid lane uh, since playing Akali, um, and. Boy, is Morgana boring to play against. Yeah, um, she's, uh, you just press it W. Is, you press W, shoves the lane, she gets priority, um, and it is just it is just not fun for the game. Um, and again, she's fairly strong, too. Um, even in support, she's strong, but I think they are trying to target her, her W uh, as far as in the mid lane. So here's what they did. In 9.7, they dropped her health regen uh, from 0. 0.6 to down to 0. 0.4. Uh, her W Tormented Shadow, which is the culprit for this super hard wave clear in the mid lane. They changed the minimum total damage ratio uh, from 0.8 ability power to 0.7. Um, and it's still at 0% target missing health. Uh, and the maximum total damage ratio was 2.6 ability power. Now it's scaled down to 1.89 ability power. And it's still at 100% target missing health. So they tried to uh, make it not as strong as far as clearing um, minions because that's basically what she does she shoves roams shoves roams she has good cc she has a spell shield um yeah and so she's just kind of over tuned all across the board um i did check out her uh win rates uh in the mid lane and so her win rate went uh in plat plus from 54.9 uh, to 52 percent um, gold was the same thing. Silver went from 55 to 54, not much change. Bronze, 54 to 53, and an iron, 54 to 52. So, is it a nerf? I guess, <laughs> if you look at the numbers, but Morgana is still pretty strong. She's still succeeding pretty well on the rift. Um, I don't think, and if you even, we'll, we'll look up, um, you know, movers and shakers in all the lanes later on, but she is still doing really well. Um, I think if you were wanting to play Morgana, she's still a good champion to pick up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think these nerfs have done anything. Um, any final thoughts on that before we move on from Morgana? No, I don't okay. think Morgana was that big a deal. Yeah, Morgana is just, she's the same. 
Um, all right, Pike. So this was not uh, again not that big a deal. They did. Um, I guess, quote unquote, buff his Q just so that he has a lower cooldown early on. Um, and then they increased the stun duration of his E. I just wanted to see if that really um, did anything for him uh, because I didn't think Pike really needed any changes. Um, did you think he needed to be changed at all, uh, Style? I don't think he needed buffs, but I don't think he needed nerfs either. I think he just needed... Yeah. He was okay where he was. Yeah. Same, same I didn't here, see so. much of that, to be fair. Yeah, and that's the same that's for me. So I just... I just wanted maybe they're yeah maybe they're trying to get him you know uh, seen more but uh, you know the change win rate hasn't changed uh, in plat plus it's the same and from iron to gold there was a slight slight increase so if you already play pike then you're probably liking it um, but it's not that big of a change to to make a difference on the rift um, finally the last one I wanted to talk about was mundo um, so mundo got a buff. Um, but not just that, Cinderhulk got a buff, and so, you know, uh, and that's, they're not completely related, but, you know, the fact with tankier junglers, and then Mundo's kind of tanky, um, you know, we wanted to kind of see some of that interaction. What are your thoughts on a, on Mundo, you know, 9.6 and 9.7 style? Any thoughts or opinions on him? Um, in top, I don't think it's that bad. Maybe in jungle, the the difference is bigger, but, like, in not many people play Mundo. That's the problem. Mm, yeah, it's a good point. So yeah, even not, if he gets through, even if he gets through bound phase, people aren't gonna pick Mundo, especially <laughs> in uh, what is it, gold below. People aren't playing tanks. They're gonna play like high Bears. impact. Yeah, it's a good point. So and uh, see... go ahead. Yeah, so you might see like you might see like drastic win rate changes, but you won't see or uh, drastic pick rate changes. Yeah, definitely. And I think you're right about that as far as low elos. Nobody really picks for team comp. Nobody's really picking to see <laughs> to play a tank. Uh, who really wants to play a tank? Um, so I think you're right about that. And so let's let's take a look at the stats. So first of all, let me look at... Uh, let me find the buffs here. Okay, so Dr. Mundo, they buffed his damage um, pretty much. So uh, let me pull up my stuff here. So 9.7... Uh, so the Q infected cleaver, um, the damage was at 15 scaling to 25% of the target's current health. Uh, that has been buffed to 20% scaling to 30% of the target's current health. So 5% across the board. And then E masochism minimum bonus attack damage, uh, went from 30 to 90. It now is from 40 to hundred. So 10, uh, 10, uh, flat damage increase across the board. And then maximum bonus attack damage went from 60 to 180. It's now 80 to 200. So quite, you know, I think those are decent, uh, damage changes, um, to see there. Um, Mundo is really more known for the tankiness of himself, especially into AP comps, but, uh, let's get, let's take a look at some of the stats. So Mundo buff, uh, in top lane, uh, because I did want to take a look at jungle with Cinderhawk buff and see if that, you know, actually helped him in the jungle. But in top lane, uh, from the win percentage, in plat plus, uh, he went from 46% win rate in 9.6 up to 48%. In gold, he went from 47 to 50%. In silver, from 48 to 51%. And in bronze, from 49 to 52%. And in iron, he's been unchanged. Um, so we're seeing, uh, we're seeing slight increases here. I mean, the buffs do indicate that uh, he should win a little more and he has been across the board um, but you're probably going to find a little more success in, in lower elo even though maybe a tank isn't something you want to play uh, at the same time sometimes what I've found in lower elo because that's where I'm at let's be honest um, people don't build correctly and so people see a Dr. Mundo and they don't build uh, the proper things to negate his damage and healing like I, it's very rare I'll see an executioner's um, or or anything to, to combat the healing of Dr. Mundo. And so I think maybe a lot of times in lower elos, um, he'll rain havoc because he'll do a ton of damage and people don't know how to counter his, his insane healing. So um, that's the top lane uh, stats. Now cross jungle uh, because of the Cinder Hulk buffs. And let me just uh, buffs. Let me just read Cinder Hulk uh, the buffs there real quickly so grilled razor beak uh used to deal 200 percent bonus magic damage to minions and monsters it now deals 300 percent um so it it actually uh helps clearing very quickly um so let's take a look at his jungle stats uh and platinum 
Uh, this is interesting. He went from 41% win rate in Platt, Platt Plus. Now he's jumped up to 46%. So still not above uh, 50%, but he's jumped up 5 percentage points in higher ELO. In gold, he went from 44 to 47%. In silver, from 45 to 49%. Bronze, 46 to 49 And iron, 47 to 49 So he's jumped up across the board in the jungle position uh, in win percentage. Now, this could just be an overall jungle uh you know, tanky jungler, people who build Cinder Hulk items might have seen. I I didn't check myself, but people who build Cinder Hulk may have just actually seen a win percent <laughs> increase across the board. So that could be the case. But in, if anything, uh, Mundo did see a win percent increase in the jungle there. So any other thoughts on that, um, Josh, as far as uh, Mundo goes? No, I haven't seen okay. him much. I yeah, haven't seen. seen him him. Like, I actually really? have only seen him like once, I think, in the in since the patch drop. So, um, yeah, that's that's definitely. Um, so those are things that you want to watch out for. You know, those were I think the biggest things. Were there anything, anything else uh, style that you wanted to talk about as far as uh, something I may have missed uh, with the patch? I mean, to me, those were the biggest uh, buffs or nerfs that. Uh, yeah, that hit the I think rift. you got like most of them. Okay. Um, and there are still some that I didn't really get to check. Like I didn't check Wits End. I didn't see if that was built more. I also didn't check Dark Seal uh, because they they um, decreased the sellback value. So a lot of times people would just keep buying it because it was it had such a good uh, sellback value that it really didn't cost you much. Um, so I didn't get to look at those item percentages, but that might be something uh, on your own time if you guys. Are interested in that take a, take a look at those items because those were big changers uh all right so last thing i want to talk about are movers and shakers right so i wanted to take a look and see in each lane uh some of the champs that you know uh have maybe gone up in power strength gone down uh, maybe if there's any sleeper picks and champs that are still showing uh good strength so uh do you want to make any predictions here style uh, in any of the lanes, is there any chance that you just want to rattle off the top uh, that that you think are still strong at the moment? Um, uh, I would say Jinx in ADC is still strong. Okay. I would say um, Lucian is still not that bad. Okay. And then cool. I've seen. I would say Ezreal might have been changed. Okay. And then yep. in top lane, I would say Kale again. Um, Urgot. Riven, Jax, maybe. Yeah. I haven't seen much Jax. Yeah. Actually, I haven't either. Uh, I still ban, but that's because I pretty much ban him all the time. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of Kennen. Well. Full okay. AP Kennen. All I right. still think play is all right in, in LCS. Berg and yep. play new game. Yep. It's true. Mid lane. Um, Morgana, I guess. But Okay. Hmm. I see a lot of Yasuo in EU. Yeah, I see it here, uh, but honestly, yeah. I don't. That's a whole separate. I think Yasuo deserves his own. <laughs> so dumb. Stats are in. I think irrelevant with him. <laughs> Just out the yeah. Uh, who else do I see in mid? A lot. Hmm. I don't think I see that much in mid. Oh, Oriana, I see. I feel Oriana, Oriana is like one of the champs that's always relevant, but you'll never yeah. see her like excel. Yeah, I think she's all. She provides a lot of good utility, honestly. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with that. Um, okay, those are some good predictions. Cheerio says more getting nerfed. That's good to hear. Uh, if you heard us just talking about that, it seems like her quote unquote little tiny nerfs that she got 9.7 haven't really done much so it would be interesting to see what they do um we, we don't want to take her out of relevancy but she is a tad strong at the moment all right so those are your predictions let me go through just the movers and shakers in each lane real quick uh based on the stats um so um We'll start with the top lane and just work our way down. So top lane, uh, still strong from 9.6 to 9.7. You pretty much mentioned all of them, and I don't think anybody would <laughs> disagree. But Kale, uh, Riven, Urgot, and Jax are all still top tier, um, according to multiple stat sites, uh, as far as just the tiers. They're still uh, the best uh, of the best in top lane. Uh, the biggest gainers, and these are going just by win percentages, not necessarily pick rates or ban rates or even tier rates but for whatever reason they are winning a lot so these are the biggest gainers that i saw 
Uh, so Kled went from ten, number 10 all the way up to number 4 as far as win, win rate goes. Uh, interestingly, Vane has gone from 11 to 6. Uh, and Kennen, which you mentioned, has gone from 12 to 7 in win rates. So those are some of the biggest gainers that I saw. Uh, again, I'm not really sure why they've increased in win rate. But for whatever reason, those are the three champions that seem to make the biggest gains. Uh, now, the biggest drops as far as win rate goes. So Urgot, while still tied Top tier has gone from the third highest win rate in top lane down to 12th. Um, so, uh, you know, that that's something to watch out for, even though he still is top tier. Uh, Wukong has gone from 6 down to 10. Vlad uh, ha- was surprisingly, even though Vlad is considered a monster, uh, maybe more so in the mid lane, uh, he was at 17 on the win rate scale down to 22. Uh, and Silas, which is, we just talked about Silas. I didn't see him much top, but he was at sitting at 19, uh, number 19 as far as win rate goes. He's dropped to 44, so pretty bad. Uh, and then sleepers, possible sleepers. Mundo has gone from the very dead last, 44, which is now Silas's spot. Um, and he's uh, gone up to 31. So uh, are, these, saying... uh, are these by role or by champ? So this is by role in the champ, or champ and the role. So this is top lane and for those champions. So I have Vlad again in mid lane. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, say you say, like, uh, Kale is, like, number one. Is that K- yeah. number one in top or number one overall? Nope, that is number one just in top lane. So for okay. top lane. Yep. So when I'm saying top and I list the champions, these are specifically researched for that, for that lane. Yeah, yeah, for that lane. So. So there you have it. Um, you know, hopefully that will give you some more information to make educated decisions. All right, let's move on to. Well, first of all, anything surprise you there, Style? Um, that Vane right? surprises me. Yeah, Vane kind of surprises me too. Um, Is this normal Vane or like Klepto Vane? I, I don't really know. I don't really know to be honest. I just looked up win rates, and uh, you know, she's while she's not like top tier um, for as far as making moves in the win percentage goes, she's definitely jumped up. She's jumped up five spots. I feel uh, like Vayne would be good in lower elo because um, maybe maybe what you see, what you do when you have Vayne top is that you uh, you just camp her right. Mm, ADC. Yeah. So remember that, y'all. Don't let the Vayne just free farm. <laughs> And I guess, you know, she'll do fairly well, too, against any melee, you know, matchups. Not all, but, you know, because she yeah, is like ranged. Yeah, like Nasus. Yeah, exactly, like Nasus. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to the jungle. Um, so, still strong from 9.6 to 9.7 are Jarvan, Rek'Sai, Master Yi, and Vi. Um, so, they were still high. They were high tier in 9.6. They're still considered high tier in 9.7. Um, now the biggest gainers as far as win rate goes, and you could probably notch this guy into the, the upper tier now in 9.7, uh, is Hecarim. So Hecarim went from 11th in win rate for junglers now to number two. So he, uh, the reason he wasn't on the still strong list is because in 9.6, he wasn't considered a, a top tier jungler. He was still high, but not top tier, but now he is. So he's a big gainer from 11 to two, and he's also moved into to the upper tiers as far as jungler goes uh biggest losers as far as win rate goes and this is kind of odd that i found talia actually had the sixth highest win rate as jungler um but she's dropped to 30 i don't know why she was so high and why she dropped so low uh rexi even though he's still top tier he's dropped in win rates from number 13 going down to 19th um and then Jax, who isn't uh, a top tier jungler still decent uh but he went from 12 to 16 he dropped in win rates um and then finally any any sleepers some that i found for junglers Interestingly enough, Fiddlesticks has gone from 29th uh, place in win rates, has jumped up to 9th in win rates. Um, I don't know why that's the case, but that's what the stats are showing. And again, remember, when I say gainers, losers, and sleepers, I'm looking strictly at win rates here. I'm not looking at all the other factors of tiers and stuff like that, which tiers do incorporate other things as far as play rate, ban rate, um, all of these things, meta. Um, so I'm when I'm talking about gainers, losers, and sleepers, I'm talking strictly about uh, win rates. But again, win rates do indicate something um, that they're working or not working. So there's something to pay attention to. So uh, any thoughts on that? Any surprises for you in, in the jungle category style? 
Um, not too many. I would say Rek'Sai is the biggest. I don't know what his win rate was before he got changed. Yeah. But after, after he got changed, he got like a pretty high gaining, and then he probably decreased now after the nurse. Yeah, and I had mentioned, and I had was watching an LCS game, and I remember them saying that uh, it, it's funny because sometimes champions get played because not necessarily because of a buff or whatever but maybe sometimes it's just a quality of life where people forget the champion and then some they do something to make it a little easier to play even not necessarily a buff but maybe just a quality of life change and all of a sudden he gets a lot of play again so um, i remember them saying something like that but they did change him a little bit so um we did yeah. see increase in play increase in win rate uh, but it seems like the win rate at least has gone down slightly in 9.7 but he's still a top tier uh jungler so um way oh so okay so total koala rain thank you for the input there Rek'Sai is a she wow i learned something new today guys <laughs> did you know Rek'Sai was a she style yeah i knew Rek'Sai how come you didn't say anything man because man, if, I'm the only reason I know Rexai is a she is because <laughs> if I call him, if I call Rexai a he, John will come and yell at me that she's a, a she. Wait, wait, wait! Kindred is a she. Is Kindred a yeah, she? Kindred is a she. Ma- Malzahar is a he. That's what I all right. get. Okay, all right. Here's here's what I'm gonna have to do. A new segment one day will be guess the gender of the champion we're gonna have a little you're gonna quiz. have a bunch of what is it social justice warriors i know well, that's our, I'm, gonna discla- I'm gonna put a disclaimer on there because this is a video game gender gender uh like whatever gender fluidity is pretty uh is pretty i don't know uh gray area in video games anyways so i don't think it'll be that big of an issue but i i would like to do it because honestly i don't really know and i would like to know so i learned something new guys if you didn't know, Rek'Sai is a she, Kindred is also a she. Uh, the wolf part of Kindred is a he. Okay. Uh, stop lying to me. Darius is not a she. See, now I'm getting trolled. Now people are uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are just trying to confuse me because I'm easily confused. But to go back to what Total Koala Rain was saying, Rek'Sai got a giant quality of life buff when they made it way harder to avoid her ult. So I guess that's the change they made. And uh, for whatever reason, I guess you know that's kind of brought her... Uh, into favorable status to play her play her that's right Rexai is a she so anyways that's the jungle all right let's move on to mid lane um so mid lane here is here is uh who is still strong um so zed vlad ari and morgana are still top tier mid laners at the moment zed has stayed at number one for two patches now um i guess since they made those um i guess they're buffs i'm not a zed player i don't know if they were buffs or just changes but either way um he's he's really strong right now vlad is still strong he was number three moved up to number two in in tier rankings ari was number four moved up to number three in tier rankings and morgana moved up from five to four in tier rankings so those are still the strong champions in the mid lane right now uh as far as biggest gainers uh in win rate we've seen zillion now he's not a a top winning mid lane champion but he has gone from rank 20 to uh up to 15 and anivi has gone from 18 to 14 so nothing huge as far as like are there champions that are uh taking the mid lane by storm not really <laughs> not really but those are a couple champions that have started to make a little bit of moves um in the win rate ladder uh zillion and anivia uh the biggest losers uh, we have talia again um which again is weird because she went she was a big loser in the jungle category also a big loser in the win rates of the mid lane category going from second highest win rate in mid lane down to 13 um and here's something for you right we talked about kale kale went from six on the win rate in mid lane down to 20 so pretty big uh, drop there as far as win rate goes in the mid lane. Um, and then finally, some sleepers. Uh, if you're looking for some, some of those sleeper picks. As far as win rate goes, Twisted Fate has gone from 25th uh, in the rankings up to 17th. And uh, Velkaz, I don't know if this is anything new, but Velkaz has consistently had one of the highest win rates in mid lane. And I think it's... I don't know. Maybe if you just know how to play Velkos, you're going to probably win a lot of your games. Uh, uh, but TF and, and Velkos has just consistently been high or Velkos has been consistently high win rate. Uh, TF has started to make some moves. So those are some sleeper picks for you. Any thoughts, surprises or anything uh, there, Style, 
when it comes to mid lane. Yeah, I haven't seen TF in like years. Right. Yeah. I, I, so Valkos, I, I get. Valkos, what? Valkos, I get. You can just like poke and then press R and win. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheerio says Zillion boosted because Bjergsen keeps playing him in LCS. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe this week. Who knows? Uh, I know every time Bjergsen plays a champion, it makes me feel like I can play that champion just as well. And no, completely opposite results. But that's the mid lane for you. So again, uh, still ones to maybe ban if you're playing mid lane or play them yourselves if you don't. Uh, Zed, Vlad, Ari, Morgana. Um, don't play Kale mid. That's still my feeling. <laughs> Unless you're in the EU. <laughs> I don't know what the this is, but for NA by the way, so I don't know. It could be different to you. All right, let's go to uh, ADC. Uh, Josh, you said earlier that you think Jinx is still strong. Well, you are correct, my friend. So, uh, Jinx, Draven, and Vayne are still the top tier ADCs from nine point six into nine point seven. And other than that, there isn't much change going on with the ADC win rate, loss rate, or anything like that. Um, I think maybe because there hasn't been a lot of change since, um, you know, the itemization changes, I guess, um, that I think ADCs have kind of just settled in. So, again, the top tier ADCs are still Vayne, Draven, and Jinx. Now, as far as win rate uh, gainers... Kogma has gone from rank 8 to rank 4 as far as win rate goes. Uh, with biggest losers, everything's kind of been the same. Uh, and then for sleepers, um, Ash. I know you like Ash style. Ash has gone from number 4 in the win rate category up to number 1. Um, so Ash could be a champion to look at if you like playing those types of champions. Um, what do you think about it? you still playing Ash style? Have you have you noticed yeah, anything? Yeah. Ash is I great. know you like Ash her. Ash is a great champ. Yeah. Okay. Great champ. She's in my top 3, right? Jinx, yeah, Caitlyn, I know, and Ash. Yeah, I know you always mention Ash. So uh, surprisingly, Caitlyn is is pretty high, but she's not considered top tier. Um, I don't know for whatever reason, but she's still pretty steady. So it's not like she's uh, seen any drops or huge gains as far as win rate goes. She's been pretty yeah, steady. Yeah, she's been in the same place. Yeah. yeah, she's in the same place. And most of the ADCs have been like that too. So um, yeah, so that's ADC for you. Not much change there. Uh, and then finally, uh, my main role, support. Um so in the support role, the ones that are still strong, surprise, surprise, Morgana is strong still. Nami, which is my beloved, still strong. Soraka, still strong. And also Sona. Those are top tier. Um, we could throw in a few more in there, but I just wanted to keep it to three or four. So those are the top. Morgana, Nami, Soraka, Sona still. They were strong in 9.6, still strong in 9.7. Uh, biggest gainers as far as win rate goes. Uh, Fiddlesticks, again, we mentioned him in the jungle. He's gone from rank 13 up to number 8 in the win rate category. Velkaz uh, made slight improvements from 11th to up to 9th. Morgana is already a strong pick, but from 9.6 to 9.7, she's... Uh, Gone from 12th to 7th in the win rate category. And then Blitzcrank has gone from 13th to 9th. So uh, making some gains in the win rate columns. Um, Fiddlesticks, Velkaz, Morgana, and Blitzcrank. Uh, some of the biggest losers as far as loser, uh, losing rate goes. Uh, Thresh was at 3rd. Uh, on that uh, win rate category, he's dropped to eighth. So he's gone down in win rate a little bit. But Thresh is one of those champs I think is a little bit... Uh, skewed from stats because if you're good with Thresh, Thresh is going to be good wherever. Yeah, there's so, so many one tricks. Yeah, there's so, so many, many one tricks. Thresh. Thresh. Yeah, exactly. So it's stats like that and with Yasuo. Don't always give the full story, but I just thought I'd throw that in there um, that Thresh's win rate has uh, gone down a little bit. Um, and then as far as sleepers go, I did not really see any. Uh, you know, I still like playing my Zyra, my brand. Um, but, you know, th I think there's nothing significant there that we're going to see making uh, any significant pushes there. Uh, any thoughts on that support uh, category there? Style, anything surprised you? Sounds about right. I know you play with the Nami one trick. Uh, <laughs> does that make yeah. about proper sense there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those most of those are okay. You can see that, what is it, Blitz and... Blitz and Thresh aren't doing too great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I like playing, to be honest, I like playing Blitzcrank and Thresh when I'm on my Smurf. <laughs> if I get filled in support, I'm not going to be playing the top tier ones. I just want to play... Um, 
you know, supports that. One that of the reasons be. why Blitz and Thresh are strong uh, are weak is because Morgana is strong, and Morgana yes. counters both of them. Counters both of them. That's right. Um, and even Nami, you know, uh, obviously if you get hooked by that, any of those, it's game over. But if you can avoid that, they're still pretty strong as well. So, uh, and they have typically, well, Thresh I know has a, typically a weaker laning phase, but um, Thresh is so good. Uh, and especially if you are proficient with him, he has he offers so many things. So um, don't don't forget about him. If that that's a support I want to you know put more games in and really get better at. I played a game yesterday, and I totally inted level one through three because I just want to go ham every time I pick up Thresh. So <laughs> don't do what I do. Um, but anyways, any final thoughts or anything on this fact check episode? Those are pretty much the big things that I found in my my research. I felt like a student again. It felt good. Um, but any other <laughs> final thoughts you want to share to our listeners as they continue uh, the rest of the week on 9.7 style? No, I think that sums up like what's strong and what isn't. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So uh, here's a slide. Send us your questions. Send us your thoughts, feedback. Look, we're on iTunes now. We're on Google Play. Uh, you can tweet us at the All In Podcast, or you can send us email at the All In Podcast, lol at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to start to put out more episodes uh, per week uh, because we do have several segments that I think would be interesting for you guys. So uh, be on the lookout for not just having episodes once a week, but perhaps perhaps two or even three times a week uh, as we expand the number of segments that we do. Uh, brief recap is that I did put out a Reddit post advertising for more co-hosts. Uh, while Style and Light do amazing jobs, um, they, they also have lives too. And so I wanted to throw in more people that we could add to the rotation and talk about different things. So uh, I had over 150 applicants. Um, and so I went through all of them. I think I've narrowed it down to a good amount of, of uh credible and and decent hosts i think we have about 20 or so um zyrene being one of them so i'm hoping to have him on the show sometime uh, but be on the lookout for more shows more segments but i'd love to hear your thoughts feedback and on any of that stuff so um that's gonna do it for today thanks again for listening or watching and i will catch you guys on the next episode